Hello and welcome to another edition of Insight, the Greater Cleveland Partnership feature that focuses upon areas of interest to the Greater Cleveland business community. I'm Steve Lutner, and joining me today are Marty McCann, Senior Vice President of Advocacy for the Greater Cleveland Partnership. Hi, Marty. Hi, Steve. And Tim Cosgrove, partner at Squire Patton Boggs, which does advocacy work in Columbus for the Greater Cleveland Partnership. Hi, Tim. Hello, Steve. Gentlemen, today we're going to be doing a little bit of a post-mortem on last week's election. We've got a lot of ground to cover, so let's just get to it. Let's, let's start at the county level, Marty. New County Executive Armin Budish coming in. What's that going to mean? How, how are things going to change, do you think? Uh, we have the good fortune of work, working a lot with Representative Budish over the course of the last eight years as he was in the Ohio House and specifically during his, his period of time where he was Speaker of the Ohio House and he was supportive of programs that are key to our Northeast Ohio business community like the New Market Tax Credit Program and the Ohio Venture Capital Fund and we're hopeful that he'll take some of that those ideas and really apply them uh, at this regional level of government. So we have a good working relationship with them, and I think uh, that'll serve us well in the, next, uh, in the next couple of years. Now, there's also going to be some change in the leadership at county council. C. Ellen Connolly didn't seek re-election, so there's going to be a new president. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, it looks like there's really two people that are most likely to succeed her in that, in that role. First, uh, council vice president Dan Brady. It would be a natural progression for him to step up to that, to that next chair. Uh, and then also, I know Dale Miller in the past uh, has shown interest in, in, in a leadership role in council. It's our sense that, uh, that, that Dan Brady would probably be in a position uh, to, to take over as, as council president, but we'll see how that plays out over the next weeks. Let's move to Columbus. Tim, let's talk a little bit about Governor Kasich's huge victory. Covered, uh, carried 86 out of 88 counties. Just a, a little bit of interpretation about what that might mean. Sure. It was not a surprise that he won. I think the depth and the breadth of the victory uh, surprised some folks and the impact that it had throughout other elections as well. For the fifth time in six uh, statewide elections, the Republicans swept all the statewide offices. They also elected a record number of Republicans to the Ohio House of Representatives. There are now 65 Republican members in the Ohio House. And the, uh, de the Senate remains solidly in Republican hands with 23 members. And interestingly, even in the Supreme Court race, um, there was some question as to whether or not Justice French would be able to prevail, and in the end she did. And of course she was supported by many in the business community. So the, the governor and the legislature, give us an idea of some of the big issues that they're going to be facing in 2015. There will be little time for the Republicans to rest. Right after the first of the year when the 131st General Assembly is convened, they'll get right into the budget process. Uh, tax reform is going to be one of the first things. Uh, I think there's consensus among Republicans to lower Ohio's income tax. The challenge will be how to pay for that. Uh, the governor has some ideas. He's been uh, pushing a shift to a more of a consumption-based tax, expanding the sales tax, also some discussion of increasing the severance tax in Ohio on oil and gas. All of those have met with some resistance in the Republican legislature, and I suspect that they will again. So that will be interesting in a, in a, in a tough debate. Uh, also, Medicaid expansion will be debated in, the, in this next budget. The last time around, the governor was able to get Medicaid expansion without going directly through the legislature. He will not have that luxury this time. And there's a lot of opposition among Republicans to expanding Medicaid in Ohio. So those will be two big challenges in the budget. And also, they'll be dealing with energy policy. In House Bill 310, which uh, the GCP was very involved with last time, dealing with energy efficiency standards on renewable portfolio standards. All those issues will continue to be discussed and debated in the next uh, next General Assembly. And all of this against a backdrop where there's continuing discussion about whether the governor will be a presidential candidate. He is, he is, he is being talked about that way, obviously, and it's a, a natural given the size of his victory, the position of Ohio and the electoral process and the Electoral College, um, and just the general condition of the Republican primary at this point, absolutely. And it will all be seen in some ways, potentially through that prism. And finally, let's move on to Washington, Marty. The election uh, in terms of Ohio and Northeast Ohio at a federal level, some, some discussion there. So all members of Congress uh, were able to retain their seats, uh, and most by stunning, by stunning margins. Uh, all 16 of them. All, all 16 of them retained their seats. There, were, uh, there was only one race that was in 30, 30 points. So. Um, the seniority of our members is, is growing. So, you know, seniority being so important in Congress, our members are gaining more seniority. And, you know, obviously it doesn't hurt to have spe uh, Speaker Boehner uh, from the Ohio delegation. Um, but also, I mean, we've got Congressman Johnson, who's on the Energy Committee, responsible for NASA issues. He'll be more influential. We've got uh, uh, 
Pat Tberry from the House Ways and, Me House Ways and Means uh, Subcommittee Chairman. I mean, we've got a lot of influential uh, members of Congress whose stature is growing. So I, I think it will help us as we address issues about immigration reform, health care, uh, the whole assortment of issues impacting our members. And this, this Republican uh, takeover of the U.S. Senate it, uh, helped uh, Senator Portman a little bit. He was involved with that effort. Yeah, Senator Portman was key in the effort to, to have the Republicans retake uh, the, the U.S. Senate. He was uh, a key member of their, of their campaign team, uh, helping elect other senators. Uh, and so his stature is obviously growing uh, uh, as well. He's already been a go-to for our members and for our organization, but increasingly so with this uh, new Senate and the Republican leadership. Uh, probably also worth noting, in, uh, having Senator Brown there with the relationship he has with the presidential administration is, is helpful as well. So we're very well positioned in Ohio, and I think re regaining some of the, uh, the, the clout that we lost you know, 10 or 15 years or 10 years ago when uh, Congressman Regula and Congressman Hobson stepped down. A lot of change, a lot of things to watch on multiple la layers uh, in the uh, months in uh, 2015 as we go forward here. Thanks very much, Marty. Thanks, Tim. And thanks for watching another edition of Insight. In the weeks and months ahead, we'll be examining more issues of interest to the greater Cleveland business community.